In the dungeons of Fidoria, Raiden sits in meditation, struggling to clear his troubled mind. <sighs> if I ever see you again, I'll kill you, traitor! Val, forgive me. Raiden rises and paces to the window. Beneath his shirt, he feels the weight of the anti-magic book he smuggled out of the Grand Library. If there's even a chance this book holds the key to defeating Azura, I must find someone to translate it. Outside his cell, clanking footsteps mark the hourly patrol. Two guards stop at Raiden's door and stand at rigid attention. Good morning, fine fellows. Do not address me, heretic. A fine day to you as well, my old friend, Regis. I've told you to stop calling me that. My name is not Regis. If you say so, Regis. Why do you mock me so? Do you people prefer to start each day with a beating? Enough. He is attempting to undermine your discipline. He'd better be careful or he might just succeed. Listen, Spymaster. Your simple goading might work on the dumb brutes of this land, but we soldiers of the Empire aren't fooled so easily. Then it seems... I'll just have to try harder. Now may I beat him? Just ignore the Soph. Her tongue wags more than a dog's tail. As Raiden begins his morning exercises, the guards chatter between themselves. I'll admit their food is disgusting and their dancing is inelegant, but there is something to this Fidorian music. All I hear when Fidorians play is the hissing of a thousand snakes. Those words, I recognize them. That's a passphrase used among agents of the Black Asps. That guard is speaking to me. What do you think about taking a patrol down to one of their taverns as he- I think if you go drinking in a Fidorian pub, you'd best bring steel. Bring steel? He must be offering to... Sneak me weapon. Your friend's right. This city is likely on a knife's edge right now. The Black Asps agent nods. Yes, I read him correctly. Enjoy, Fedoria, my friends. Just remember to keep a sharp lookout. We just grunts. Black Asp's agent nods. Excellent. That will prove useful. As the chattering guards continue their patrol, a door at the other end of the dungeon cracks open. A young girl enters. She glances around for the guards then tiptoes shyly up to his cell, carrying a tray of food. He hello Hello there. She sets the tray down and slides it carefully through the bars. When Raiden bends to retrieve it, she flinches away. There is no need to be afraid. I mean, you no harm. Thank you for the food. I had begun to think the Empire did not believe in hospitality. We do, sir. The Emperor says that the civility of a people may be judged by the treatment of the lowest prisoner. Then I am quite content to be the lowliest prisoner of the most civil empire in the world. Her face flickers between amusement and confusion. This girl may be able to give me a picture of what's happening in the palace, if I can gain her trust. Ma, my name is Leah. Raiden Lickle. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. As Raiden begins to eat, she comes a few steps closer. You're close. Are you from Aurelia, sir? You have a sharp eye. My clothes are indeed Aurelian, though I myself am from Lycos. She looks around nervously, then steps closer and whispers. My mother says people from the Five Kingdoms are barbarians that most don't bother with nice clothes at all, because it gets in the way of drinking grog and wrestling bears. I can think of a few friends who might feed that assessment. But I've read books about the kingdoms in the library at Mosley, so I know you're not all like that. You like to read? Yes, sir. Then you shall have to explore the Grand Livery of Enan while you're here. It's quite a marvel. I shall. Leah steps up to the bars, now bubbling with curiosity. Sir, is it true that Lycos has sea monsters? Or that trees in Thorgate grow hot as steel? 
other people from Stormhold hold a festival where they get. Slow down, slow down. At this rate, I'll be answering questions all day. Oh, I... I'm sorry. It's alright, but I have a better idea. Have you heard of Sly Fox Says? No, sir. It's a party game we play in Lycos. Foxes run wild there, you see. Very clever creatures. They've learned many ways to feed themselves and one of those ways is begging. So they seek out friendly faces by observing people's appearances. And if they judge correctly, they get a meal. I see. How does the game work? We take turns observing facts about one another, then draw deductions. As you did with my clothes. If your deduction is correct, you get to ask me a question, and I must answer truthfully. What if you guess something correctly? Then you must answer a question of mine. Leah bites her lip, uncertain. But her curiosity wins out. Okay, let's play. I'll start. Sly Fox sees that you have a formal manner of speaking and an excellent vocabulary. Sly Fox says you're an educated noble. That's correct. Now I get to ask a question. What made you come speak with me? I... I was curious, sir. I've never met someone from the kingdoms before. And given that we're at war... Well... I thought that I should. Thank you for your honesty. I believe it is your turn now. Okay, Sly Fox sees that. Your clothes are very fine. So, Sly Fox says, you're not a barbarian. You work somewhere civilized. Perhaps a palace court? That's correct. Now you may ask me a question. Okay, uh, are you a prince or wait? No, are you a knight? That was two questions, but the answer to both is no. Oh. And now I believe it's my turn, Leah. Sly Fox sees that you have beautiful white hair and fine clothes and a crown. Leah's hands fidget. Sly Fox says you are someone very special. Leah averts her eyes at first, then slowly smiles. Yeah, yes, I suppose I am. What is your question? Leah, are you the Empress daughter? Leah shuffles uncomfortably for a moment, then squares her shoulders and looks at him directly in the eyes. Yes. Your turn. Sly Fox sees that you are kind and honest eyes, Sly Fox says. Leah hesitates her eyes flickering up to meet Raiden's for a brief moment. Sly Fox says, you're a good man. On that one, I'm afraid uh, you are dead wrong. Suddenly, the door to the dungeons flies open, and the Empress enters, flanked by guards. Fetch the Spy Master and bring him to... Leah, what are you doing here? I was just visiting Sir Raiden. We were playing a game and... Enough! The soldiers shrink away. Leah flinches, but stands tall. We were just talking. The Empress's eyes narrow, then a warm smile spreads across her face. Of course you were, child. Of course. But I must speak with our new friend as well. Please, run along now. Return to your studies. Leah gives Raiden one last look, then lowers her head and starts towards the door. Yes, mother. The Empress's eyes follow after her, distracted for a moment. Then her attention returns to you. Bring him to the gardens. Azura turns on her heel and swiftly departs, as a dozen guards crowd into his cell. Are you sure you brought enough friends? The unamused guards seize hold of him. Raiden's captors haul him into the palace courtyard, where the Empress awaits with her personal escort. Sir Jorin. Realm Rat. Thank you for joining me. Certainly. Though I fear I'm overdressed. Raiden holds up his shackled wrists. 
You are funny, Spymaster. I can see why my daughter took such an interest in you. The Empress invites Raiden to walk alongside her. Joran glowering, falls in close behind. Tell me, what did you think of her? Leah, I think she's... quite intelligent. My daughter is educated, yes, but naive. Countless tutors at her disposal, yet still she fails to grasp the one lesson I beg of her to learn. What wisdom is that your radiance? That kindness and trust are precious gems, and a ruler must spend them with the utmost caution. Raiden approaches the palace gardens. I suppose you assumed your display with the crossbow would buy my trust. No, your radiance. I would not dare presume you fool enough to trust me. I hold merely to borrow your ear, nothing more. Some would say an ear is the greatest vulnerability a ruler could lend a spy. Juran here has concealed me to kill you and be done with it. Honest advice from a loyal soldier. But the soldier is a hammer, your radiance, and a hammer regards every uncertain as a nail. You dare! Azura demisses Joran with a wave. Y your radiance? Leave us. Leave him alone with you? Your radiance? He could be dangerous! Azura's laugh echoes across the courtyard. <laughs> And you would protect me? Is that it? My great champion, who was defeated by a decrepit brute with a club. Joran's face burns with shame. Be gone! Joran bows, staring daggers in his direction, and stalks away. I do not trust you, Raiden Lakel, but I would hear what you have to say. Come. Raiden follows the Empress to the center of the gardens. She takes a seat at the fountain's edge. You are Master of Spies for Queen Kenna Reese of Stormholt. I was your radiance, yes. And now you've just decided to change sides? I have. Miraculously thunderstruck by the sudden light of reason, I suppose. Something like that. Azura stares silently into Raiden for what seems like an eternity. Finally, she speaks. You are a stray beast, Spymaster, who has already bitten the hand of one master. Give me one reason I should believe that you won't bite mine. Because the good you can do outweighs the bad. I first saw it when I came to Marossi. You have taken many lives, as has Kenna. But unlike Kenna, your rule is lasting, stable and prosperous. Your cities thrive. Your people are happy. A small smile plays at the corner of Azura's mouth. You speak well, Spymaster. But tell me, what is your measure of Kenna Reese as a ruler? As a woman? Kenna is compassionate but naive. Kenna is young, sentimental. She dispenses mercy and judgment, not in the service of strategy but wherever the winds of passion blow. Truth be told, your radiance, she's much like your daughter. The Empress's face twitches with guarded amusement. Is she now? Most interesting. But I grow tired of interrogation. Come, Spymaster. I'm sure you must have questions of your own. I do, in fact. Please, ask them freely now and I will answer as best as I can. I wonder, what do you think of these gardens? That is your question. I promise to hold your answer in the utmost confidence. Azura chuckles, shaking her head at Raiden, then takes a few moments to contemplate the flowers. <laughs> I find these gardens lovely. I am pleased we were able to take Fedoria intact. It would have been tragic to sully such beauty. Azura casts an appraising eye over Raiden. I have watched you for some time, Spymaster. In truth, I admire your craft. But you don't trust me. Not yet. My trust is earned with time and obedience. 
A mischievous smile spreads across her face. Would you care to dine with me? What? She crooks a finger beneath her chin, tracing the blade of her nail along the curve of his neck. I've had a noonday meal set in the gardens. You're welcome to join me. Only if Jorin serves us. That can be arranged. Unless you prefer the dungeons. I would be a fool to turn down an invitation to dine with a beautiful woman. Spare me your flattery. I would not dare flatter you, your radiance. She sighs, patting Raiden's head, and returns to the other side of the table. Alas, the time for play has passed. Let us turn to the matter at hand. The death of Kenneris. Raiden coolly crosses his arms to mask the tremors of fear in his hand. Do tell. I wonder, Spymaster, in all your secret gathering, have you ever heard of my shadows? Only whispers of whispers, your radiance. As it should be, they are my order of assassins, and their skill knows no equal. They strike in pairs, first lightning, then thunder. Though, as I recall, King Luther's first wife never lived to hear the thunder. I see. Um, am I to assume these shadows will soon be loosed upon Kena? Azura rests her chin thoughtfully on steepled fingers. That, I think, is one question too many for today. She claps her hands and summons the guards. Empress? I am finished with this prisoner. Return him to his cell. Yes, your radiance. The guard seizes Raiden by the shoulder and begins to haul him away. Oh! And Raiden, sleep well. Tomorrow we march on Stormholt. Later in his cell. In you go. <laughs> the guard shoves Raiden to the floor and slams the door. Come now, Regis. I thought we were past all this. Now you listen, and listen well, miscreant. You may have a fine race, and all the pretty words in the world. But if I sniff even a whiff of treachery towards our Empress, I will cut your head from your shoulders and gladly accept the consequences. With a sigh, Raiden stretches out on the bed. He feels something beneath the pillow. As his fingers curls around the handle, he gives Regis a warm smile. There is no need to worry, my friend. I assure you, I have only the noblest of intentions. <laughs>